I define authenticity as the intersection of trust and truth. When you trust yourself enough to live in your truth and show up as your truth. And that's hard. Hey, my name is Jenna Kutcher and I am obsessed with all things business, marketing numbers, and helping you to navigate both the messy and the magical seasons of this thing called life. I'm a small town mama who took a $300 camera, grew a successful photo biz, and now I work from home and run a seven figure online business. I teach you the tried and true secrets to building a career you adore. Shy away from the real talk? (laughs) No way. Money, hardship, growth, loss, and marketing are all topics we discuss here. Think of this as your one-stop shop for happy hour with a gal pal mixed with business school. Pull up a seat, make sure you're cozy, and get ready to be challenged and encouraged while you learn. This is the Gold Digger Podcast. Do you remember the moment that you found your true calling? For Tunde Oyanayan, it happened when she took her first indoor cycling class in 2015. After a childhood and adolescence struggling with her own body image and self-esteem, Tunde embraced fitness as a way to work on her physical and mental health. But it was at that cycling class with the dim lights and the powerful beats of the music that transported her to another world. And she knew she was meant to motivate people to becoming the best version of themselves. Tunde's career didn't begin in fitness, though. Before she became a Peloton instructor, a motivational speaker, founder and author, she had a lucrative beauty career. She left it behind to pursue the world of fitness as a Peloton instructor, but it wasn't overnight success for Tunde. She didn't nail her first Peloton audition, but she also didn't give up. As a dedicated Peloton rider, I love taking Tunde's classes for her motivation and energy and spirit. So it is my gift to have her on my platform today. Are you ready to get into it? Let's dive on in with Tunde. It's so cool to be podcasting alongside my business BFF and the woman who inspired me to start my own show. Amy Porterfield is the host of the online marketing made easy podcast brought to you by the HubSpot Podcast Network. With a focus on online business, including digital courses, email list building, social media, webinars, and content, online marketing made easy breaks down big ideas and strategies into actionable step-by-step processes and is designed to get you more results with a whole lot less stress. If you love listening to the Gold Digger podcast, then you'll love these episodes from Amy. Normalizing mental health for entrepreneurs. Thriving as an introvert in an extrovert career. And what happens when a launch doesn't go as planned? Listen to online marketing made easy wherever you get your podcasts. Tune day. It is so awesome to have you on the Gold Digger podcast. Welcome to the show. Hey, girl. Hey. I have to first start by saying it's so good to see you, IRL, as the young people say. I've followed you on Instagram for so long now, and I'm so motivated and so inspired by the type of content that you put out. So thank you for for what you do. Yeah, well, right back at you. I feel like you are in my life. And it, I mean, it's kind of crazy, and we'll talk about this when we talk about your book, but you get to be in people's lives every single day in the most motivating way. You are showing up in living rooms, in basements, in offices, and mm-hmm. It's got to be just kind of surreal to think about now with your book coming out, you're going to be showing up on people's nightstands, like the most intimate place that you can be spending time with. So before we get into all of that, let's talk about who is Tune Day. Tell me about you and kind of a little bit of your backstory. Well, when you said it like that, okay. (laughs) Wow. (laughs) Nightstands. Oh, uh, who is Tunde Oyinane? I am a first generation American. My parents emigrated here from Nigeria to live the American dream, to live the American dream so that their children could have a better life than they did. They're no longer with us in physical form, but I am so fortunate that I get to live out that prophecy, their legacy. I grew up in Houston, Texas, I moved to LA when I was like 20 something. The story always changes because I had a fake ID for so long, but I can't remember how old I actually truly, really was. So I moved to LA around 21, something like that to pursue my dream of becoming a makeup artist. And so I was there for 12 years before I found the bike or rather before the bike found me. And I now show up every single day on a platform that interfaces with 
tens of thousands of millions of people every single day. And I get to do what I love. I'm getting to live out my wildest dreams. Isn't it? I mean, makeup artist to Peloton instructor is a very interesting path and probably one that you didn't necessarily envision when you were first beginning. Tell me a little bit more about your makeup artist days because so many listeners are in the service-based industry. I used to be a wedding photographer. And so you're Mm. in that business of trading time for money. And the only way you get paid is when you show up. And it's often a lot less glamorous than people make it look. Walk me through what your LA dreams kind of turned into and then how that led you to the bike and what was your next pivot? Yeah. I mean, I loved that job in makeup. I loved working in makeup until I did it. I loved the job (laughs) until I hated it. And for me, I got into the world of beauty because I enjoyed gifting people with confidence. I enjoyed gifting people with confidence. And I say that because I grew up not a very confident kid. I was overweight and made fun of, teased. I was one of the only Black people in a predominantly white school. I was really like the only dark-skinned Black girl, even amongst the very few Black people in my school. And so I felt so different. I felt like an other. And so once I found confidence and felt how good it tasted, I wanted other people who were feeling like how I had felt, I wanted other people to have a taste of it. And so I got into the world of beauty, not for the girl who's already fly or already beautiful, who knows that she looks good, (laughs) who's going out. I did it for the girl who had lost her eyebrows because she was going through chemotherapy. I did it for the person who was struggling with their identity, finding themselves for the person who was maybe making their transition. Like I did it because I wanted to allow people to see how beautiful I thought they were just by meeting them at a quick glance to see that, to identify something in someone that was beautiful and then pull that feature out. That's why I fell in love with makeup. Now, I say I loved it until I hated it because, you know, with anything <laughs> that becomes corporate, you can lose it. When you're an artist, you can lose the, the art and the passion yeah. and all the things. And so I found myself in a space where I'd worked really, really, really hard to establish my dream role within the company that I'd worked for. You know, many people would have killed for that job. I would have killed for that job. I was living in LA in a nice neighborhood, in a nice apartment. I drove my dream car. I didn't have to check the menu before I went to restaurants anymore. And so, yeah, I was good, except for I wasn't good. Every day felt the exact same. Every day for me, which didn't work for me personally, Every single day felt the exact same. I I didn't feel like I was being able to help people the way that I was. Now, I also trained makeup artists in in my role. And so those were the good days when I got to share my skill with other makeup artists. Those days were every day. It It was few and far between. So yeah, that was like the makeup artistry side of it. And then how did the shift to fitness happen? Well, I... It's such an intricate story. But the short of the story is I mentioned that I was overweight as a kid. I start working out before I moved to LA. And then I find myself like even more into it when I moved to LA. I was in New York City, booked for like a makeup gig, a makeup conference. And I wanted to get a workout in. And so I went down to the hotel gym. The hotel has like a busted treadmill and a hula hoop. There was like, there was no good going to come from that. I probably could have just stayed. There. You know, and then it's the thing where you go down, you put the clothes on and you tell, you went down and the gym was terrible. <laughs> but then you tell yourself, you're like, look, I tried. It didn't work. Let me go up back to the hotel room and order room service instead. Like how many times have you done that? Where you're like, I tried. Let me get champagne yep. and cheese. Uh, And it's probably what I would have done, but I was like on my super kick, like with my green juice and I was like on a hardcore kick and I needed to like close my rings or something, I'm sure. Uh And so 
Kelly Ripa had been talking a lot on TV about this indoor cycling studio that she's going to and how it was so amazing for the club. And so I said, well, I'm here in New York. They have it here. Let me try. So I go to the spin studio. By the time I clipped in, purchased my water bottle, my towel, my shoes, I was $40 deep and judging myself for spending $40 on a workout. And so I'm sitting there three minutes into the class. I'm in a state of euphoria. Like I'm in another world. So I unclip from the class. I'm walking back to my hotel room. My walk turns into a skip. My skip turns into a hop. And then I start laughing and crying all in the same moment. It's like this blue wave flashed over my body from my fingers to my toes. And within a matter of five seconds, I saw my life, my life's trajectory flash in front of me. I knew Jenna after taking my first cycling class, I knew that I'd be cycling for the rest of my life. I knew that I'd be teaching it. And I knew that I'd be teaching it on the world's biggest platform, able to impact the lives of millions of people. I should rewind and say, I didn't even know what Peloton was. And yet I knew this vision and I saw it with certainty. Never in my life was I more sure of anything. I think, you know, for me, the reason that I was able to receive this message, because I think that we're all given messages all the time. And I think it's an intuition thing. And from a very young age, I think we, we have intuition. It's innate. It lives in us. And then from a very young age, people start to block your intuition. People start to, and I say this in quotes, like tell you to think logically or real, Right. And so, you know, when I was a kid, I told my dad I wanted to be a teacher. And he said, no, you don't. Teachers don't make enough money. And then, you know, the joke there is that I was in cosmetics as a teacher for 15 years. And then now I teach by virtue of a bike. (laughs) And so I did know in kindergarten, I did know that I wanted to be a teacher. But yeah, I think that for me, I was in this space of doubt. I think that people fear doubt. I think most people think that doubt is a bad thing. Doubt does not feel good. It is not pleasurable or comfortable for any of us. I think that doubt is your body's way of signaling that a course correction is about to happen. It's your body's way of signaling change needs to come in, whether that's your relationship with your partner, relationship with a friend, your job. When doubt enters Listen to the call. The beauty of uncertainty is infinite possibility. The beauty of uncertainty is infinite possibility. When you don't know what's next, anything can be next. Because I was in this space of like, oh my God, what am I supposed to do? This job, I hate it. I don't know what's supposed to happen. I was able to open my lens and allow whatever opportunity was waiting for me to make its way. If I thought that I knew the way that things were supposed to roll, or if I thought that I knew what was coming next, that I would have only been looking for what I thought was next. But the truth is, I didn't know what the hell was next. And that was, for me, the most beautiful blessing. It was the most beautiful space to be, not knowing, uncertainty, doubt. As a leader, you're always on the lookout for ways to arm yourself with knowledge the books, the seminars, even the podcasts that help you make the best possible decisions for you and for your customers. Because when you know more, more good can grow. With the HubSpot CRM platform, you can store, track, manage, and report on all the tasks and activities that make up your relationships with customers. With a bird's eye view over all your customer interactions, HubSpot empowers your decision-making like never before. So you can give your business and your customers all the good you've got. Learn how your business can grow better at HubSpot.com. How many times have you thought to yourself, I should start a podcast? Maybe you've got a voice backed by passion, a knack for storytelling, a penchant for entertaining, a gift for listening and asking those really good questions. No matter what your specialty is, there's a reason you're feeling pulled to the podcast space. So listen to those words. That's the universe maybe telling you something. You should start a podcast. 
lean in and make a move, it's time to hit record and host your own show. I can help you craft one from scratch. Snag my totally free guide for podcasting beginners at jennacutcher.com slash start a podcast. That's jennacutcher.com slash start a podcast for my beginner podcasting guide. I mean, everyone listening to this can think of not knowing uncertainty and doubt in the last few years, right? Like that's what the entire world was facing. And I think what a freaking beautiful reminder of like when we are in those times, Like we need to keep our eyes open, our ears open, our heart open, because that's when we can start downloading things in a different way. It's almost like, you know, how everyone's like, oh, when, when the world slows down or when, when my calendar opens up, I'll magically be this different person. And Mm. we were all granted that opportunity in different ways. And it looked different for every single person. But we almost had to face ourselves in the mirror and be like, am I who I said I was going to be? Am I doing those things I said I would do when I had time? Mm. So I want to know, what did it look like for you having this divine download, spinning and being on a cycle? Divine download. Divine. (laughs) Come on, write it down. Yes. Take it. Take it. Well, you have this and you are you know, on a bike the first time, what happened? Because it wasn't just like a well-paved path leading you to, oh, suddenly she is Tunde, the Peloton instructor. (laughs) Walk me through how we went from riding a bike to where we are today, how we see you. Well, the road to success is never linear. There's ups, there's downs, there's highs, there's valleys, there's lows. But that gives you momentum when you go down and then there's an upswing, there's momentum, you push, and then you go down again and up and down, up and down again. Yeah. When I tried out for Peloton, I didn't get the job the first time around. And so, you know, you have this vision where you're so sure this divine download, as you so beautifully put it. And then you go to plug it and you realize the modem doesn't work. Like, I don't know what plan and I'm in referencing a modem, but you realize that the modem doesn't work. And it's like, I think for me, it was, you know, I have this vision. The vision doesn't come to fruition. Well, rewind. I have this vision. Then imposter syndrome sets in. And I think to myself, you know, when I'm in New York and I have this vision, I get back to LA, imposter syndrome sets in. And I think to myself, I don't look like an instructor. I don't sound like an instructor. What the heck would I say that could ever inspire or motivate anybody? Like all the things you tell yourself about why you shouldn't go after something you want to do. We allow fear to steer. We allow it to hold us hostage. I was allowing it to hold me hostage. And so it took me like maybe some six to eight months after this vision where I, I think I you know, got my certification, all of that. And then I'd auditioned for a mom and pop studio in LA. I started working there. I worked there for eight months. I got a DM from some guy named Cody Rigsby, said he worked at Peloton. Didn't know, I knew, I knew what Peloton was at that time because I'd worked with Allie a couple of times, once doing her makeup and then once on a panel. And Allie Love, that is. And I saw that he had the certified little check mark from Instagram. And so I'm like, I don't know who the hell this guy is, but Instagram thinks he's legit. So let me actually respond. So I responded. We set up a, a Zoom FaceTime call or whatever before the days of the pandemic. So it was like, okay, this guy wants to FaceTime me. Like, wow, what's this? So I auditioned. Uh, he told me my audition was great. One of the best auditions he'd ever seen. A month later, I get a call that I didn't get the job or rather an email saying that I didn't get the job. And so, yeah, I, I've experienced a lot of trauma in my life. I lost my brother when he was 19 years old. And then my dad passed away three years after that. And then three years after that, my mother passed away. And so half of my immediate family passed away within six years of each other. And so I've experienced trauma. Unfortunately, I know that feeling, that feeling so well. This felt like another trauma. It felt like another loss. Not because I didn't have my way and get the job that I wanted, but because I trusted something that I'd seen. I was so sure. And now there was this idea that this download, this intuitive moment, 
divine moment wasn't real. And so that was the loss. The trust that I had established within myself, I felt like I was mourning my trust in myself. So there was, you know, some time that I'm like in this dark space, just like this dark space where it's like dreadful to now get up and go to my everyday job. Because at this time I'm a makeup artist and I'm also uh, teaching uh, a cycling studio on the side. It's almost difficult to go because I had, I had auditioned for Peloton and I thought my vision was aligning and this job is absolutely mine. I've already claimed it. I've already seen it as mine. And so, yeah, I stayed in that space for a little while and then I slept myself out of it. Myself and my friend Jade, we were on a hike one day and she said, Tune day, she knew I didn't get the job. I talked to her about it and I hadn't told very many people. She said, one thing that is true or certain about your life is that everything always happens for you. Mm. Like as a, a bystander here, that's watching your life happen in real time, everything always happens for you. And so it was that, that reminded me that nothing is happening to me and everything is happening for me. If I didn't get the job, I wasn't supposed to get the job. And I trusted that. And, mm. you know, eight months later, Cody calls me back. I audition again. This time I get the job. Yeah. I wasn't supposed to get the job the first time around. Like, Many key factors changed between within that eight months. And I was supposed to start at the time that I started. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I think it's really, there's this quote, it's actually by a preacher and it it says, sometimes the season of waiting is just as important as what it is that we're waiting for. And I think Mm. a lot of times we forget that on our journey because it's like, we're so excited for the thing that a lot of times it's like we can spend that season of waiting, just wasting it when it's like, no, no, no. Like you're supposed to be working towards it. And I've had this in a very different way. And I love your story because it's like you had this vision and it would have been so easy to be like, just like the workout at the hotel. I tried. It didn't work. I'm moving on. And yet you just had to trust in that timing. And I think for so many people, it's like we see the tune day today and you forget like, all of those years, all of those experiences, all of that trauma that made you into you that we see. And so I just love that you, one, your friend is brilliant. Thank you for the wake up call friend who says, just keep waiting, you know, but two, I'm thankful that you held tight to that vision and learned. Cause I think the learning part is important how to trust in that timing. What has it been like since getting this dream job, living out that vision. What was that first ride like on the Peloton at the Peloton studio? First of all, what has my life been like? It's been wild. It's been a roller coaster. Yeah. Uh, After my very first class, John Foley, who was the CEO at the time said, after the class, we had a meeting and he said, were you nervous? And he's got the just the biggest, most joyful, proud smile on his face. You know, so happy that I'm there. And I'm thinking, oh, you're so happy I'm here. I'm so happy y'all let me come here. He's like, we're happy you're here. <laughs> so it's a mu- we're having like this mutual bonding love fest. And yeah. my answer, he said, were you nervous? And I said, no. And he looked at me almost in amazement that that was my response because he didn't. I think he didn't expect that. And he said, you weren't nervous. And I said, no, when you are doing what you are supposed to be doing, yeah. how could you be nervous? How could anything go wrong? If you're doing what you're supposed to be doing, how could anything go wrong? Because even if I misstep, if I said something wrong, if that moment was created for me, even what I might say that might be wrong is actually right. Because that moment was created for me. And so that was just me surrendering. That was me trusting that all was good. So what was there to be nervous about? Mm. You said, okay, in this ride, and this ride was literally probably years ago, but I've never forgotten it. You were talking about your own health journey and your own body journey and and finding your own strength and and the transformation that you've been through. And you said, 
people always asked me how everyone was just how, how did you do it? How did you do it? And you were like, nobody ever asked me why. Hmm. And they missed the entire point of how it was even possible because my why was so strong. I want to know the why behind your book, Speak. Not the how, tell me the why. Why is now the time for your book? Why this book? Why you? Yeah, it's good. Yeah, and the story that you're referring to, people always ask me how I lost weight, but Mm -hmm. not why. Because the why is the thing that, that's the key. The why is what gets you to show up. For me, the why behind this book, showing up to hours on ends to write and rewrite and write the book. (laughs) <laughs> and then put your story out there at that. Like now the book's been written and now people know my stuff. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right? Stuff you put in the closet. In this book, or this book, the book Speak, it's a memoir. It's the story of all the moments that have led me here. Many of the moments that have led me here. The joy, the triumph, the loss the trauma, the heartache, the missteps, the missed opportunities, the self-discovery. I believe that we all have the same longing for love and hope. I believe that we are all more alike than we are different. We're very different, but I believe that we're deep down more alike then we are different. If all the lessons that I've learned, and some of them heavy, painful lessons, if those lessons can help to inspire someone or even meet someone where they're at, my hope is that you pick up this book and the book meets you exactly where you are at within your struggle or your journey. And you see yourself in me. And my hope then is that you then close the book empowered to grab the pen that writes the next page, chapter in your life. I think that we're all more alike than we are different. And I hope that you see yourself in me and in my stories and my struggles and my opportunities. And that motivates you. What I've been able to achieve through it all. If that, my hope is that that motivates someone, you, to write the next page, next chapter in your life. A lot of people probably don't realize this, but SPEAK is actually an acronym. Can you walk me through that? Because I think that is so powerful in the way that you teach. You are just an innate teacher from five-year-old tune day to today. <laughs> Tell me the acronym of SPEAK and why it matters to you. SPEAK, when I thought about writing this book, I looked at five words as elements and how they showed up in my life. Speak, surrender, power, empathy, authenticity, and knowledge, S-P-E-A-K. I thought about how when I surrendered, it resulted in change, and that change led to growth. I thought about when I finally found my power, I connected Mm. to my power, not how much I deadlift or squat, but my power, that drum, that tingly thing, like those blue light moments, when I feel so connected to, so in line with my purpose, when I feel like I'm living in purpose, on purpose, of purpose, I define that as power. When you're doing that thing that you know that you're here to do, In the book, I speak to my power. I speak to it as this drumbeat that I follow. And when I don't know which direction to take or which bridge to cross, I listen for the sound of the drum. That's my gut and that's my power. Empathy. 
I speak to empathy in the book in some ways having empathy with others, but mostly having grace, allowing grace, a space for grace within myself, having empathy, empathizing myself, loving myself, finding self-love. I define authenticity as the intersection of trust and truth. When you trust yourself enough to live in your truth and show up as your truth, and that's hard. When you trust who you are enough to know that you're good, you're okay to show up as you are. And then lastly, knowledge, having all of the experiences, the experience to back it, factoring in all of the many lessons. When I put those five words together as elements, I'm able to speak. I find my voice. The title of the book again, speak, find your voice, trust your gut and get from where you are to where you want to be. Mm. And so So it's just stories of it's stories. And hopefully we, we all speak together. Mm. Tunde, where can everybody find you and connect with you and get their hands on your book? Give us all of the places. (laughs) Well, the book you can find anywhere you buy books. It's available for hard copy as well as audiobook is available as well. Uh, you can find me at speaktoonday.com or on Instagram, Toonday, or you can come and take a class with me on the Peloton app. I'm everywhere, everywhere you want me to be. So, so find me. <laughs> Oh, do you have any final pieces of advice for someone who maybe doesn't have that vision? They don't know where they're headed. They haven't had their blue light moment and they're just in that season of waiting. What would you tell them? Trust, trust, trust yourself, trust the process. I would remind them that The beauty of uncertainty is infinite possibility. The opportunities that are coming, they're limitless. And then I would invite them to surrender, be free with themselves. Do you really not know what's next or do you not believe yourself? Do you really not know or do you think that you're not able? In many ways, I think that failure isn't real. I think that failure isn't real. I think that failure is something that we tell ourselves so that we can give up. I failed. Now I have to stop trying. If failure didn't exist, we would try something, not succeed, and then be forced to try again. If you could never fail, then you would just continue to keep trying. Failure isn't real. Don't allow fear to steer. And most certainly don't allow fear to hold you hostage. Do you really not know? Or do you just not believe yourself? Wow. Well, I get to see you on my bike and on the app. And now I get to see your face on my nightstand reading your book before I close my eyes every night. So thank you for the work that you do. And I'm so excited for people to get their hands on your story and to hear more from your heart. Thank you so much, Jenna. Thanks, everybody. During that interview, I just kept closing my eyes. Tune Day's voice has been one that has been in my ears for years now, thanks to my Peloton. But hearing her heart in this way was just such a gift. I am so excited to read all of the pages of her story in her new book, Speak. And I sincerely hope you go out and get yourself a copy. Thank you so much for listening to another episode of the Gold Digger podcast. I pray that your divine download is coming and that if you're in that season of waiting, that you understand that the work happening in this season might be just as important as what it is that you are waiting for. Until next time, Gold Diggers, keep on digging your biggest goals. I'm over here giving you a virtual high five because you just finished another episode of the Gold Digger podcast. 
Did that go by way too fast for anyone else? If you want more, head over to golddiggerpodcast.com for show notes and all the discount codes from today's sponsors. And if you're looking for a new crew of movers and shakers like you to bounce ideas and ask questions, be sure to join my exclusive community for gold diggers on Facebook. The link's waiting for you at golddiggerpodcast.com.